Hi everyone and welcome to Art with Nathan. Over the last two weeks we've been looking at the fundamentals of drawing and I'm sure you guys have filled your sketchbooks with uh, simple objects and more complex objects. And today we're going to tackle objects in relationship with each other. And I thought we could uh, look at a theme of morning routine. And if you're anything like me, you wake up in the morning uh, and you want a cup of coffee, but you first look in the mirror and you think, it is what it is. But you don't have to apply that level of uh, acceptance to your drawing skills. That can be improved for sure. So uh, yeah, let's get at it. So uh, today we're going to be drawing this still life. And uh, uh, just a quick note with still lifes, lighting is so important. But for today's lesson, uh, we, we, we're not going to take that into consideration. Uh, maybe for the next lesson, we'll look at how to best uh, suggest three-dimensional form with object. But today, we're not going to do that. Uh, we're going to be just looking at, again, just structural drawings, the first two steps. So it's line leading to shape. OK, just those first two steps. OK, and we're going to be looking at how these shapes and lines are in relation to, the relationship to each other. Just to emphasize, the structural part of a drawing uh, is the most important part. That is what we're going to be, uh, that is where you're going to spend most of your time, most of your focus, uh, most of your focus drawing. That is what really makes up drawing. That is the process of drawing. So we're going to look very carefully at uh, our arrangement. And I want you guys to do this at home. When you get home, choose some very simple objects. So I've chosen my uh, coffee grinder, French press, and a coffee cup. And we're going to be looking at uh, how to draw this structurally. So the first object, uh, so I've got to make some decisions here. So the first thing I'm going to do, before I do everything else, um, and it's so hard to start with a blank sheet of paper or canvas, is I'm going to just draw a line going stra straight down the middle. Okay. And remember, all of these lines are construction lines. Let me just get a darker pen here. There we go. They're all construction lines. So you can be pressing very lightly when you do any of this. And these lines really represent thinking, thoughts, on how to approach something. It's, it's, it's almost like if you were practicing a conversation with someone, how you want it to go down. You can do that with a drawing. Where do I start? Which angle do I approach it by? Uh, how do I portray what I want to portray? So in this drawing, I'm going to put this imaginary line somewhere over here, OK? All right, so you'll see that I've made my line connect with the outside edge of my French press. So I think what I want to do is I'm going to use my French press as my primary object. This is the thing that I'm going to use to measure up against everything else. So what do I know about this line? Somewhere over here is my French press on this side. OK. So I'm going to make another decision. How big do I want my French press to be? So let's say my page is about this big. OK. And I've got this. Let me just redraw this nicely. I've got this line coming down. How big do I want my French press to be? So I can also just make an arbitrary decision. OK, so I don't want to take up the whole page, but I want to use a page quite well. I say the top of the French press, which is, I'm going to say there, not there. OK, I'm going to say it's about there. And I'm going to say the bottom, OK, is about there. OK, cool. So again, we've begun to create what looks like a grid. OK, it looks like I've divided my page into six. That's absolutely fine. Actually, I would rule. OK. There we go. Cool. And, and so now I'm going to try and make some measurement decisions about the size and proportion of the French press. So we have a length. OK. So I'm going to use my pen. And uh, one way that you can measure drawing from life is with this method of, of uh, measuring with your arm and your pencil. OK, so it, it's a really tricky way of doing it. It's not exactly um, perfect. But remember, this is a drawing. This, this is a document of your autobiographical marks on a piece of paper. It's a trace of your touch. It doesn't have to be photographic. It, it's, it's not about using rulers. This is really about your experience and your feelings and your observations. So when you're measuring, uh, the technique is you hold your arm straight up. And you can close one eye. You can have. Both eyes open, doesn't matter how you do it. 
and you're going to use your thumb as one point, and the edge of your pencil, whatever you're drawing with, paintbrush, the tip as the other. So for example, you also don't want to, you want to keep your arm at the same length that you measure. So you can measure close up, but make sure you kind of keep that same distance from, from your eye to the pencil to the object that you're drawing. But just for ease sake, we are using a printout because it's very difficult to get that over there. So what you'd do is you'd measure. So I'd say my French press is about this high. So pretend I'm looking at it like that. And I see my French press is that high according to my observations. And then it's about that wide. Okay, so then I know, okay, so my French press is just about the length of this marker, almost exactly. And the width, I'd say, is about halfway. So then I've got this distance here. And I'm going to measure about halfway, which is about there. And I'm going to take that measurement, and I'm going to just dunk it this side. So I've taken that measurement, and I've moved it here, my grid. And I know, there we go, in this rectangle is my French press in that shape. So everything that is the French press, I'm going to draw in this shape. OK, very, very basic. Now, I'm not done with the French press, but I'm, before I move on, I need to address these other objects. How do I now get the correct proportions and the, the different relationships that I have between them? How do I transfer them? Um, and uh, so we have to look very carefully. So let's address the coffee mug first. Um, let me just straighten these lines up here. OK, there we go. Cool. Guys, there's no rules when it comes to drawing. I know I'm teaching a system, OK? But this is really just to, to help you think about drawing. So many of these things, the measurement into proportion, I don't actually do when I draw, because it's, it's become second nature. Um, kind of like writing or playing an instrument. You get to a point where you don't have to think about it. Uh, at first, when you do start, uh, a lot of thought goes into it. Um, you think about every step, and I think that can create some anxiety, and um, and it wouldn't motivate it. Mo it's not really motivating, but what what you do is remember that all of these things will just become programmed, and you'll be able to do it quite easily. So I'm going to look at my coffee mug, and I'm going to think, what's the best shape that I can express it with? Now, immediately, you guys might be thinking, well, it's a cylinder, but I want even more simpler than that. Again. We're going to use a square or a rectangle. And always remember your north, east, south, west, OK? Sorry. Oh, guys, my geography teacher just rolled in his grave. Shame, that poor guy. Uh, it was the days of corporal punishment. I would have got jacks for that one. OK. <clears throat> So we've got to decide uh, how, what is the relationship between these two objects. Where do they intersect? Where do they overlap? What is the proportional nature of it? So again, I'm going to get up my little measuring thing. All right, so I know my, um, this is, was a measurement of my French press. All right, this was the width of my French press that way. So how does this measurement, which is equal to this, okay, like in terms of a ratio, how do I get that? So I'm going to measure my coffee cup. And I'm going to see it's about, um, it's about two thirds, maybe just, just past halfway. So let's say that's halfway, just a little bit past halfway, so it's about that big. OK, so then I know that's how big my coffee cup is. And if I had to guess, so there's halfway, there's a halfway point of my French press is about here. Okay, so there's the top. There's the bottom halfway point about there. So I see it's just below halfway, somewhere around there. OK, and it's about 2 thirds of the French press. So there's halfway, another third, from there to there. Then I know I have that measurement. So somewhere between these two lines is my coffee cup. And uh, so I'm just going to give it a guess, guys. So I'd say about there. You can measure everything out if you want. But generally, our eyes are quite good at seeing. And draw lots of lines. These lines are supposed to be quick. 
oh, in the in the width. So let's just see if there is a so the width of it right there. Have a look. It's slightly wider than my French press. So there's that width there. I'm going to just go slightly wider right there, coming down. So if you look at my lines coming down, it's kind of going in a sort of southeast, southwest direction. Today I'm totally directionless. My wife will tell you that I have no clue where I'm going half the time. But that's because I think in two dimensions. Um, all right. And I want you to look how I'm treating these objects as if, so I'm not going to erase this part here where, where it overlaps. I'm treating the objects as if they were made out of glass, as if they were transparent. So even this little intersection here is so important. Okay, it helps me keep this. If I didn't have this, maybe I would get that line wrong and this relationship. But now I'm pretty sure that they connect. The object makes sense. Okay, so we we established the two. Now we're gonna, two objects. We can go to the third. And slightly more trickier is my coffee grinder. Um, something, something that's really important to me. When you become a dad, it seems all your gifts are, are either coffee or like barbecue related. I, I just don't get it. Or they get you something like soap or something that smells good. Um, yeah, so these objects represent the last three years, Christmas and birthday presents. Uh, for Christmas, I've got one of those little spoons that you put into, uh, put into, your, um, into this thing, French press. Thanks a lot, um, Mom. Um, very strange. Your presents are so much more interesting when you're a child. But that's why it's so important when you become a dad and a man that you buy yourself your own gifts. Uh, not that I don't appreciate them, but yeah. Anyway, moving on. Um, so this object is a slightly more trickier one. Okay, uh, how, are we, how are we gonna do that? Uh, so what I would suggest, um, so we can draw a central axis down the middle, and that's gonna really help us identify it. So if you see here, uh, it kind of joins up to the corner bottom of the coffee cup. So around about here. So I'm going to draw a line straight. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay, cool. That looks good. Straight down the middle. Well, not down the middle, but so this gives me a, a central access, and it also helps me to keep the symmetry. And because it's further back, it appears smaller than it actually is. Um, and it's made up of a few shapes. But again, I'm just going to represent it as a rectangle, just to help me uh, decide where it goes. Um, so I also want to try and discern the, the, the height of the thing. So it starts about there. Not quite halfway of the coffee cup. You'll see that's about halfway there. So just below the halfway line, somewhere over here. Okay. There's a top and there's a bottom and the top. Okay, I'm going to ignore that little thing there. I'm going to use this line as a top. So then I've got to decide whereabouts on my French press does this line intersect. So it's near the top. It's that length. Now, I'm going to try. I have a feeling it's about a quarter. So it's one, two, three, and a little bit. So if I were to divide this into thirds, OK. So one, two, three. And we know it's slightly more than a third. So over here. So there is about the top of my grinder. OK, cool. So and the width of my grinder, have a look. I draw a line straight there. You'll see it almost bisects the coffee cup, so about there. And then what I'm going to do is just mirror that, mirror that size over there. OK. Oh, all right, calm down. So, so What's so vital about this interaction? So all I've done is I've spent about 15 minutes drawing three squares. But what I've really tried to take care of is just the, the proportion of each object and the relationship 
between each one. So we might be drawing very boring, mundane things at the moment, but this exercise applies to uh, um, Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa or any other artwork that's ever been made. Uh, is just this basic decision how the objects relate to each other. This is such an important step. It's so important to take your time getting, getting this right. Uh, and we just want to jump into the details right away. Forget about that stuff. That's the last thing you're going to do. This is what makes good drawings, the good structure underneath. So, so now we have an idea of how each object is in relationship to each other. What we're going to do, I'm going to get a slightly darker pen. I'm going to go with my purple. And I'm going to start um, making them a bit more complex. I'm going to look at, like, look at the shapes within shapes. So let's start again with our French press. And, uh, and let, let's start with the bigger shapes, and we'll whittle it down to smaller shapes. Okay. Again, we're just going to stick with line and shape, purely structural drawing. So we see our French press is, is rounded at the top. Okay. So you want to get the size of this. We really know. So if you have a look here, at the top of my grinder, a little bit higher than that. There's a beginning. Yeah. It's a little bit higher. Well, let's stick with my structural pen. It's a little bit above here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just trying to, trying to emulate the curve okay, of the French press as best as I can. Now we do the top. Um, we're going to look at the bottom. It's got these fancy little stands, okay? And we know it's over there. So actually, in actual fact, if I think my the glass portion of my French press is about halfway through the cup, so about there. And so I've got to try and recreate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide it into just shapes. Think about the negative space. So a line coming down. So I'm drawing this, this line here. OK. And guys, everything is up for correction. Everything is up to be readdressed. Nothing is set in stone. I can come back and change it however I want. This is a completely fluid um, thing. I don't have to worry about um, making mistakes. In fact, that's the last thing you want to do. So here's a nice little relationship. If I follow this line straight across, it coincides with the top of my handle. So there I know, here's the top of my handle here. Let's see if I'm just as lucky for the bottom. Huh, not quite. Well, yeah, the top of the, the handle. So it's about there, roundabout. It's fine to guess. There are no rules. OK, and the width. Oh, let's do a measurement. The width. It's got stuff falling around all over the place. It's a bit wider than this. It's about there. OK. So it's about that wide. Lots and lots of lines, guys. Remember, these are sketch lines. Don't overcommit. Don't press too hard. And don't use too much of a light pencil, either. It'll just form, make bad habits. I haven't quite got this right. This. OK. Well, haven't quite got it right, but that's fine. We've got our big silver bands going across. They're slightly curved. I'm also going to just going to draw a center line down the middle of my French press. Feels way too wide to me. This one, just to help me draw this, uh, whatever that part is called. It's quite an interesting thing. Uh, who would have thought to make such a contraption to make coffee? Really, why don't they just put coffee in, in tea bags? Um, okay, I'll do my little spout. So I'm just going to draw it as a triangle like that. Little spout. And uh, this is about 
that link from there to there. So I'm just going to transfer that right there. And so what I normally do is uh, I see the world in, in terms of hard geometry. So like last week when uh, we looked at an apple, I would firstly express an apple like that. You know, where some of you might actually want to draw things with curved, more flowy lines. I just want to kind of fruit ninja it into shapes. Okay. So that's just me. So you see it's, it's a rounded knob, but I'm going to express it in terms of a, a solid geometric shape. Okay. Um, for me, it's, it's the easiest way for me to kind of simplify the world into simple shapes. So I'm just drawing these bands, making marks where they exist on the French press. This shape. So, so how how I'm going to do this? And it's so complex. All these it's like a springs around you. What I'm going to do is just really simple. I'm going to draw a line across like that, and a line across like that. So inside that shape, I know that's where that thing is. So one here, and then one. There we go. Cool. And uh, that that initial decision just to uh, very kind of uh, brutally just divided into that shape. It helps me not to take it too much seriously and not be intimidated by the immense amount of detail that I'll have to draw later. Cool. I think that is enough for now. I'll just draw the, this. There's a band behind you. I'm going to draw that. Again, I'm not taking anything too seriously. I'm not going to be precious about this thing at all, okay? The only time when artwork ever becomes precious is you've been dead for about 400 years and uh, somebody finds it and tries to make a buck out of it. Okay. Otherwise, if you don't like it, you can always burn it. So what I'm gonna do now is just turn the coffee cup into a cylinder. The lines are getting a bit crazy. I'm gonna jump to my purple pen just to help you guys see Oh, that doesn't help at all. Oh, this, this guy. There we go. Again, you've been practicing your simpler objects, so drawing these all together should be quite easy. I'm just going to use the... The handle, I'm just going to draw it as a rectangle for now, guys. So easy. And look, if you can't figure, figure it out what shape it is, what should it be, simplify it. It's the most simple shape, a rectangle. Move away from it, leave it for a day, come back to it some other time. And, uh, or once you've gotten a bit better, you can draw it then. But don't, don't be precious about it at all. So this is about there. I wonder if I've done this right. I've got a half moon shape for the French press. I mean the grinder. We've got some serious guys about coffee around here. You don't want to let them see you make your coffee. It's, uh, they call blasphemy very quickly. It's a real thing. Just breaking up into basic shapes. All right. So I haven't drawn everything, but I feel like this is the exercise that we need to be doing going forward, or that you need to be doing. So if you haven't drawn uh, objects in relationship to each other, it's a really good way of placing things in the real, in the real world by grounding your drawing in, in, like we say, there's a relationship here. There's a, there's some, there's a process. This, this is your morning routine. So it's, it's a good way to reflect on stuff like this and uh, 
So I would say uh, for the next week, this is, what I, this is what you should be doing, is practicing the relationship between objects. Now, it can be anything. It can be your cell phone charger and your phone and another plug. They don't have to have any relationship. It can be your kids' toys. It can be exercise equipment. It can be absolutely anything. But for the next week, just fill your sketchbooks with uh, just like this. So these kind of very structural drawings, very loose drawings, don't, um, don't, don't try and add anything onto this. The most important thing, and this is where you need to get your satisfaction from when you look at your drawing, you can say to yourself, I have gotten the proportions right. The relationships between each object are correct. Okay? I've got, the, the, that is the most fundamental thing. We don't have to do, you don't have to do anything more than that but this. And you can get a lot of satisfaction from a drawing by drawing stuff like this. So there's an artist called uh, Alberto Giacometti. You can go look him up. Uh, he mostly did drawings like this. So a structural, he was a, um, a sculptor. So he didn't need to uh, make his drawings look like form. He was just interested in how structurally things work. So do drawings to this point in your sketchbook. I'll see you guys next week. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks very much.